For some reason, my YouTube stream is just filled up with these guys hyping up AI in all imaginable forms. And it's freaking annoying. Not because I'm not interested in AI, it's a super exciting topic, but because the videos are so poorly researched. It's like most of the YouTubers just look at the press releases or extremely cherry-picked demos and tout them as objective truths. Some of the stuff is just plain made up. The other day this guy showed up in my feed and I guess it was the straw that broke the camel's back. There were just too many obvious errors in that video for me to ignore. You know, someone is wrong on the internet. Clearly, I need to do something about it. Plus, the narrative in this video can cause some actual harm. I'm not really a YouTuber, or maybe now I am. This is my brand new channel, Victorious. I'm Victor. I've worked professionally as a software engineer for over 25 years. I've worked in Silicon Valley, both at startups and at Google. Today, I'm running my own business, building digital infrastructure for app developers. On the off chance that you're a Flutter developer, you should definitely check it out. It's called ServerPod. In my work, I'm using Copilot, ChatGPT, and other AI tools every day. Needless to say, I have some experience. So what did I watch that triggered me enough to start a new YouTube channel? Let me just say first that this isn't the only video that has annoyed me. This is just the last drop, but there are plenty of others that I easily could have picked instead. Anyway, the video that we're going to have a closer look at today is called ChatGPT will make programmers obsolete in 10 years by Matthew Berman. If that statement is true, I can tell. It may be a possibility, but it is remote, and I will explain why. It most definitely is not a certainty. By the way, if you want to double check any of the claims that I make in this video, I posted references in the description below. Let's dive in by starting to look at the current state of AI code generation. GitHub Copilot is the most commonly used AI tool by developers today. It uses ChatGPT to write snippets of code, but also has a chat feature where you can ask it to explain code or ask general programming questions. This is Matthew talking about Copilot. GitHub Copilot changed everything. For $10 a month, you can have an AI assistant to help you write code. It was incredibly impressive right away. Just write a few words and it will complete entire methods for you. And there were enormous productivity gains from this and better code was being written. I really cannot overstate how important GitHub Copilot is. And when we look back at the history of programming evolution, GitHub Copilot is going to be an inflection point. Okay, so there's a lot to break down here. First, as a user of Copilot, it's very impressive. The first time you use it, it feels almost like magic. Sometimes it's like it's reading your mind and fills in the lines you were about to write. But after using it for a bit, you start to notice that the code that it writes very rarely is correct. My guess is that I will get useful suggestions only around 20% of the time. Often, the code looks superficially correct, but contains bugs on closer inspection. Sometimes these can be issues that are very hard to spot. For more novel features, Copilot is almost always completely lost. So what about Matthew's claims? First, he says that GitHub Copilot is incredibly impressive right away. I think that everyone will agree on that, but let's look at his other two claims. Massive productivity gains. Is this true? GitHub claims a 50% increase in productivity, which is obviously very impressive. However, keep in mind that they are the creators of Copilot, and looking closer at how they perform their study, it's clear that they choose a task where Copilot would perform incredibly well. I found two other independent studies on how using Copilot in a real world setting affects a team's performance. Now, the gains aren't quite as impressive. One of the studies found that using Copilot would shorten the turnaround time for new features by 2.4%. And the other is a bit more optimistic and saw a shortened time of 5%. 
For my personal anecdotal experience, my guess would have been about 10 to 20 percent improvement in productivity. But it depends heavily on what type of code you're writing and all other stuff. Regardless, it's safe to say that Copilot won't give you a massive productivity gain in any larger real world project. So Matthew's claim here is just false. Let's look at his last bullet in this slide. He says that better code is being written when using Copilot. Is this actually true? Well, probably not. I found two studies on this topic. The first one looked at the performance of C++ code written with the help of Copilot compared to code written by developers without it. They found that the code written with the help of Copilot was significantly slower. Another study looked at security flaws introduced by Copilot. They used Copilot in high risk scenarios and found that it produced codes with security flaws 40% of the time. This means that it can be incredibly dangerous to trust the code written by Copilot today, at least without proper vetting by humans. So does Copilot make you write better code? Well, the science says no. Let's listen to Matthew's following claim. And Copilot is not just guessing at what you're writing. It's looking at the context of the file, the context of the entire code base. It truly is incredibly impressive. Here, he says that Copilot is looking at the whole context of your code base. This just isn't true either. In fact, Copilot will only look at your currently open tab plus the tabs next to it. The reason for this is that the context window of ChatGPT that powers Copilot is too small. It just doesn't fit all the data. For instance, in the project I'm working on, it has over 160,000 lines of code. Plus, it depends on a large number of other projects. Some of these are absolutely huge. One way programmers get help here is to use something called an analyzer. It can give suggestions for how to interface with other parts of code. So far, Copilot cannot use the analyzer. I think a possible reason they aren't doing this is that it would require multiple queries to ChatGPT to create a single suggestion, which would be much slower and more expensive. In essence, this means that Copilot often takes incorrect guesses on what APIs look like. Anyhow, another false claim debunked. The way that GitHub Copilot changed programming pretty much overnight is analogous to if we had Pong and then all of a sudden, a month later, Red Dead Redemption 2. Like that type of graphics evolution is essentially what we got with programming with GitHub Copilot. Okay, really? Is starting using Copilot really like a step from Pong to Red Dead Redemption? I mean, in real world tests, it improved performance by no more than 5%. So is it maybe more like a step from Pong to Snake? Get me right here. I use Copilot every day and it's a great tool. It's incredibly impressive and it increases my performance while programming. I just wanted to put things in a bit more of a realistic perspective. Next, let's have a look at this clip. There are no programmers. Well, no human programmers, that is. And it's true. In the near future, I don't think there's going to be human programmers on most projects. And I'll talk about what those timelines look like a little bit later. And don't believe me? It's already happening. So here's a tweet from Amjad Massad at a hackathon where a winner is a non-technical PM and her work powered by Replit plus AI is more technically impressive than teams of engineers. I was surprised at first, but it struck me that PMs must be exceptional prompting. After all, that is their job. So somebody at a hackathon who was non-technical, a product manager was able to win the hackathon. All right. Yet again, there's a lot to unpack here. No programmers, and it has already started. But has it really? And what was this hackathon? What is the thing that impressed the engineers so much? It was hard to find the details about this hackathon, but a fair guess is that it was held to promote Replit and its low or no code solution. The app itself, it summarized documents and automatically added memes. There's nothing that indicates that any coding was used to create the app, but I guess it could have been. This is from the winner's X account. First, 
congrats to the winner for winning the 10k. That's awesome. But let's have a closer look at the check, shall we? It says non-technical category, which I can only assume means that she was not competing with engineers, but with other non-technical people. It's not too hard to get the non-technical winner when they are the only ones who are allowed to compete. My point is that it's not a great example of product manager replacing programmers, as they weren't even in the same competition. Right now, we are going through an explosion of AI coding. This is where we're at, right here. We're at the very beginning of it. Remember, GitHub Copilot came out only about a year ago. ChatGPT, just about a year ago. But it's going to grow exponentially. And when we get up to this point, there's not gonna be any more programming, I'm sad to say. And here's a chart that Ben Tossel grabbed from Google Search Trends. This is AI coding search volume over time. And as you could see, right at the end of 2022, we had an explosion in people searching for AI coding tools. Oh, I just love it when people show made up graphs to prove their points. Adding another unrelated graph to make it seem like it has some basis in reality. Even better. Will the capabilities of AI grow exponentially? Maybe. I guess there's a possibility. One thing is for sure, the hype around AI has been exploding, which that search trend perfectly illustrates. I think we can all agree that for ChatGPT to replace programmers, it will need to improve significantly. Today, ChatGPT will fail even at some very simple tasks when it comes to reasoning. Take this example. I have a 3 liter jug, a 5 liter jug, and an 8 liter jug. I want to measure 3 liters. How do I do it? Any human would take the 3 liter jug, fill it up, and be done with it. It's not a trick question. However, this is what ChatGPT comes up with. 1. Fill the 8 liter jug completely with water. Two. Pour water from the 8-liter jug into the 5-liter jug until it is full. This leaves you with 3 liters of water in the 8-liter jug. 3. Empty the 5-liter jug and pour the 3 liters of water from the 8-liter jug into the 5-liter jug. 4. Fill the 8-liter jug again. 5. Pour water from the 8-liter jug into the 5-liter jug until the 5-liter jug is full. Since the 5-liter jug already has 3 liters of water, you will pour two liters into it. Six. This leaves you with exactly three liters of water in the eight liter jug. Did you follow along? Me neither, because nothing adds up in this answer. So why does ChatGPT come up with such a crappy answer here? In its training, it's probably seen thousands of examples of pouring water back and forth between jars. So it assumes this should be the answer. It matches the answers to patterns it has previously seen, but what it lacks is common sense. Fixing this may not be an easy task. It's a possibility that it's not even doable with LLMs. Even with much more computing power thrown at training these large networks, we could be hitting a dead end. In fact, some trends seem to point in this direction. OpenAI has released two major models to the public, 3.5 in late November 2022 and 4 in mid-March 2023. This is a plot of how the different models perform in an independent coding test. While version 4 is a significant step up from 3.5, not much has happened since then. The version 4 Turbo released in November 2023 adds new improvements to reasoning or coding performance. Some other studies indicate that ChatGPT has been getting dumber as more safeguards are put in place. Then we have Google's Gemini model. I think we can safely assume that Google has thrown everything in the kitchen sink to try to beat OpenAI here. No other company in the world has access to more computing power than Google. Yet, even in their own benchmarks, they just barely beat ChatGPT by a few percentage points. This is in a model that still hasn't been released to the public yet. If we were truly seeing an exponential development in the capabilities of LLMs, the models should have been at least twice as good as they are right now. There are many times in history when early advances in technology have made us think that we are further along than we actually are. Just have a look at this clip from the 60s where 
thinking computers are thought to be only four or five years out. The thinking machine. Hello again. With me tonight is Professor Jerome B. Wiesner, director of the Research Laboratory of Electronics at MIT. Dr. Wiesner, what really worries me today is what's going to happen to us if machines can think. And what interests me specifically is, can they? Well, that's a very hard question to answer. If you'd asked me that question just a few years ago, I'd have said it was very far-fetched. And today, I just have to admit, I don't really know. I suspect if you come back in four or five years, I'll say, sure, they really do think. Or think about how Elon Musk has promised us that self-driving cars will be reality next year, every year for the past seven years. Even Bill Gates said in a recent interview that he thinks that we may be hitting a plateau in AI development very soon. There are many good people working at OpenAI who are convinced that GPT-5 will be significantly better than GPT-4, including OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, Gates says. But he believes that current generative AI has reached a ceiling. An all too common truth in software engineering is that the last 10% will take 90% of the time. This could very well be the case for ChatGPT too. If no major advances happen over the next year or two, it's not unlikely that the hype will slowly die off. When the hype dies, so will the money pouring into AI development. We could even head into another AI winter, where it would take a long time to make significant advances. So what's my point with this video? Well, I wanted to give a more balanced view of both the current state of AI for programming and the future. Will ChatGPT replace programmers? I don't know, it can happen. Will it happen soon? Probably not. An analogy is that the current state of AI for programming is like it can build a house, but it's a Lego house. It's cool and all, and great for small little demos. But building a real house, it's quite different. It takes architecture, carpentry, electric work, plumbing, masonry, roofing, painting, flooring, drywall installations, tiling, insulation, the ability to read blueprints, project management, and safety compliance. So is it still a good idea to pursue an education in programming and computer science? I think yes because it's an education that doesn't just teach you to write computer programs. It teaches you problem solving, logical thinking, analytical skills, attention to detail, creativity and innovation, product management, teamwork and collaboration, adaptability, time management, research skills, and much, much more. It also teaches you critical thinking, which Matthew could have used when creating his video. And if you think about it, programming jobs are likely the last ones to go after we replaced all the people who work with things like data entry, bookkeepers and accountants, customer server representatives, marketing researchers, proofreaders and editors, lawyers, recruiters, market analysts, financial geniuses, social media managers, logistic coordinators, content curators, event planners, and many, many more. If this starts to happen on a large scale, it's very likely legislation would be created to protect workers and limit the use of AI. That or society will collapse long before programmers are out of the equation. What makes Matthews and other similar videos so dangerous is that they discourage people from learning new skills and seeking higher education. I think videos like these are doing real damage today. That's why I made this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. This is my first video, so it's a bit of an experiment. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments and feel free to give suggestions on other things you want to see me make a video about. Until next time.